Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at what is the best option for memory for your Ryzen 5600G, or 5700G for that matter, or actually any APU. Let's get into it. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at memory frequencies and how they affect the performance of your APU. So this is with a Ryzen 5 5600G. All the tests have been done with this particular processor. When it comes to the actual motherboard and all the other stuff, you can see it's actually right there. And this is the reason why I'm doing this because we are using an ITX chassis here, ITX frame, motherboard, etc. So you do have to make the right decisions because there's not really a great deal you can do once you've actually built the damn thing. So if you are finding that you're limited on space, you're not going to be able to use a graphics card, you are going to be stuck with those integrated graphics, you want to try and give them the best possible chance of actually giving you some decent frame rates. And those can actually be hampered by using slower memory, believe it or not. Yeah, it kind of makes sense, you'd have thought it would. But does it make a massive difference? Well, that is what we're going to find out today. So we're testing with various RAM speeds going from DDR4 2400 speeds, right away up to DDR4 4400 speeds. We're missing out some of the other key ones in the middle, and there is gonna be a section we're gonna talk about a little bit later when we look at the differences between DDR4 3200 CL16 versus DDR4 3600 CL19 or CL18, depending on what you can get. And kind of spoiler alert, this 3600 actually is the better choice. But anyway, let's get on with it. So looking at the system, we've got an ASRock, B550 ITX motherboard processor, we know what that is, 5600G. We've got 16 gigs of RAM, split over two 8 gig sticks. Now I've actually been using the V-Color Prism RAM, this is the Prism 2. Actually the kit that I'm using in this particular setup is the DDR4 4000 kit, which is, uh, yeah, obviously that's why we've got 4000 speeds in our test results. And what I've done is, in between each bunch of test runs, rebooted the machine, gone into the BIOS, and all I've done is adjusted the frequency. I haven't changed the CAS latencies, any of the other timings whatsoever, literally this is all frequency based. So we've gone from 4000, then we drop down to 3600, then we drop down to 3000, and then we drop down to 2400. After that was done, I did actually think, well, what the heck, let's try 4400 and see if we can overclock it to that. And actually the system did take it, it went up to 4400 megahertz or mega transfers, and the system posted and worked as normal. But was it worth the overclock? Well, let's find out. So let's take a look at some of the charts, which uh, you'll be pleased to see. Now, first of all, we're going to start off with Firestrike from 3D Mark, and as you can see, we've got the results there. So 2400, 3000, 3600, 4000, and 4400 there at the end. And as you can see, it's a relatively linear graph. So starting off at 2400, obviously being the slowest, and then the 4400 being kind of pretty much the fastest. But what was actually quite interesting to see is when we get between the kind of 3600 and the 4000 range, it kind of tapers off a little bit. So it does seem to be, if you are planning on buying RAM and kind of running these kinds of things like Firestrike, maybe you're planning to get some kind of world record, then ideally you want to be looking somewhere between that 3600 range and the 4000 range. That does seem to be the sweet spot, at least with the default settings in the motherboard. Now clearly, obviously, if you want to go into this into great depth, you can tune the system, change the Infinity fabrics and all those kinds of things. We are looking at these results based on somebody, i.e. me or you, just building your system, not knowing all there is to know about memory overclocking, but wanting to get the best performance per your buck and not spend an absolute fortune. So let's take a look now at another synthetic. Let's take a look at Unigine's Heaven. So again, exactly the same setup. So we're going 2400, 3000, 3600, 4000, 4400. And we get pretty much the same results as we had before, a relatively linear graph. We got 811 at the very bottom end and at the top end we've got 967 so actually a pretty decent jump there somewhere in the region of about 15 to 20 percent i would say um, i've not worked out but certainly in that range what was interesting to see is the jump between 4000 again and 4400 literally pretty much identical actually no point in doing it so 4400 ram is going to be particularly expensive as is 4000 megahertz ram to be honest with you so again, the 3600 pretty much gets my vote. Now let's take a look at something a little bit different. So if you're planning on using your little rig and you're doing some video editing on the side and away from your main PC, or maybe it's actually gonna be your primary PC and you wanna do some video editing on it, how is it gonna cope with things like rendering? So let's take a look at Cinebench R23 and see what the results hold up. So this is actually, again, a really mixed bag. We've got absolutely all over the place results. 
and actually some of them were strangely worse. So as we got slightly faster on the memory, it actually had a bit of a negative effect. Now the results on this, again, all over the place, whether or not there was something running in the background, I did actually turn off things like OneDrive and all those kind of background processes as much as physically possible. And it was from a completely fresh install. All I did was install all the games and their respective installers, obviously Steam, Epic Games, all that kind of stuff. So there may have been a few things going on in the background and actually Cinebench is actually quite sensitive to those kinds of background tasks. So yeah, slight pinch of salt, but effectively, regardless of the memory speed, it didn't seem to affect performance of Cinebench a great deal at all. So now let's take a look at Far Cry 5 New Dawn. So this game runs actually relatively well on this moderate APU and the results speak for themselves once again. So here we've got the minimum, average and maximum frame rates. And down at the bottom with the 2400, we've got a minimum frame rate of 33 frames per second, which is essentially playable and a maximum of 50 down there at the lowly 2400 megahertz. As we jump up through, as you can see, there is again that linear graph. So we're going up in very small increments Averages pretty much going up as you'd expect. Again, the sweet spot from what I would say here is going to be around that 3600 mark. This does seem to give the best performance in terms of what the RAM is going to actually physically cost you from your wallet. So let's take a look back actually now at the Unigine Heaven. So we did see earlier we got the actual scores themselves, which do tell some part of the story. But let's look at the minimum, the average and the maximum frame rates. So as you can see from the results there, the averages actually didn't change a great deal and the minimums pretty much stayed almost identical. We did see a slight increase in the maximum frame rates. So again, for this kind of task or for this kind of graphics engine, it doesn't make a massive amount of difference. We are seeing a slight uptick. Again, we are seeing that kind of slightly linear graph, although this one is very stunted and there's a very small improvement as we go through. So yeah, once again, I would say realistically, you are gonna be better off with the DDR4 3600 especially in this kind of title. Also, for those of you that are interested, the 3200 CL16 actually scored 906 points on this, and the minimum was 22.6. The average was 36 frames per second, and the maximum was 76 frames per second. So again, we are sitting somewhere between that 3000 and 3600 speeds. Again, depending on the price, CL16 RAM can often be actually a little bit more expensive, so do shop around. The difference between 3200 and 3600 with those various CAS licenses, there's not going to be a great deal in it. So let's take a look at a slightly older title, which again is absolutely perfect for these kinds of APUs, and that is the original Tomb Raider. So looking at Tomb Raider, we've got the same things again. So we are starting off with the slower memory speeds, 2400 megahertz, and then going right away up to 4400. And as you can see, there actually is a decent jump there. So this particular engine actually does work very well and actually responds to memory frequency quite nicely. And in fact, we're seeing anywhere between a 15 and 20% increase as we go from the lowly 2400 right the way up to the 4000. But once again, we're finding when we go up to the 4400, essentially that is it. We're kind of capped. So realistically, somewhere between 3600 and the 4000 is going to be ideal for this kind of setup. So synthetics and benchmarks and that aside, obviously they do produce numbers, but what does it actually feel like and what are the differences actually in the gameplay? So I've done the usual thing, I've played some Rocket League and also some Fortnite as you can see here, and the gameplay that you're seeing on the screen isn't from the various settings, but is actually from one recorded game. But actually from my own personal results when I was playing the game, I did actually find it did appear weirdly to feel smoother at DDR4 3600 than any of the others. Now, I'm not entirely sure why that is. Effectively, it is a slower CAS latency than the 3200 CL16, so it shouldn't have felt as snappy, but certainly for me personally, it did feel to be very smooth, very responsive, and a very enjoyable experience, even on this lowly APU. When it comes to Rocket League, again, this is one of those games which relies on fluidity rather than raw frames per second, so you need to keep your frame pacing nice and even for it to be an enjoyable gameplay. And again, DDR4 3600 CL18 did work actually very well and felt smoother than the others. Now again, this could be down to myself actually playing it and the monitor I'm using, etc, etc, etc. But that is pretty much what you're going to get. So ideally, if you are going to be playing these kinds of games on this kind of system and you want to get the best value for money, for me, I would say DDR4 3600 is going to be the best option. But having said that, if we do look at some of the prices, so we're looking at a, a relatively generic lot of RAM here. So this is the Clev RAM. And as you can see, looking through the various speeds, this is actually a perfect implementation because we can see directly the prices on Amazon between 
the actual speeds available. So we've got the DDR4 3200, which is CL16. Then we've got the 3600, which is CL18. And then we've got the 4000, which I believe is CL19. And looking at the prices, so we've got around about £55 for the DDR4 3200. An extra £10, roughly, or £11, gets you the DDR4 3600. And then if you want to be completely mental, you can go ahead and buy the 4000 kit and you can spend over £100. Clearly, there's going to be a value winner here. So I think personally, it's going to be the DDR4 3600. Potentially, because of the way those RAM sticks are actually made, they do overclock quite well. So you could probably force up to DDR4000 speeds relatively easily. Whereas with the 3200, you might struggle, especially at that CAS latency. Again, for those of you that want to tweak and play with your settings, you could tighten up those timings yourself manually. But for most people, I think the majority, there is a very small group of people which actually do overclock and essentially know what they're doing and don't want to cause crashes, that kind of stuff. 95% of the people on the market just want to buy best value for money that's going to be stable and is going to work. So for me, I would say wholeheartedly, if you're going to get yourself one of these APUs from AMD, especially the 5600G, as we've got here in the system, then DDR4 3600 CL18 pretty much is going to be your best bang for buck. But what I think is not important, what you do is, so let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. Would you agree with me? Would you go with the DDR4 3600 for this type of setup, or would you go for something different? Let me know in the comments, I'll be interested to hear. But for now, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.